Let's walk through the three-part process of creating a skill. We'll use a pizza ordering skill as our example. Let's start by clicking the new skill button. To start creating intents, we'll click the add intent button. We'll create two intents, one for greeting and another for ordering pizza. Contents represent the types of user input that the skill will be able to respond to. Now that we have the two intents, it's time to add utterances. Utterances are the different ways users can express what they want when interacting with the skill. We don't need to cover every possibility, but the more variety we have, the better the model will be able to understand what the user is trying to communicate. We just added utterances one by one, but we can also use the advanced input mode to paste them in bulk, as you can see now for the order pizza intent. Now we can train the model with the data we just created. The test utterances option allows us to immediately test the model. We can try out utterances and see how well the model classifies them against our intents. The model is pre-trained and that allows it to understand words it was not trained with. In the second part of this walkthrough, we'll create entities. Entities will allow us to extract more information from the utterances. These ones here are system entities and are ready to be used. For a pizza ordering skill, Let's imagine the user mentions the size and type of pizza, we will need to store that information. This is how. Let's quickly create two entities of the type value list. These entities will contain a list of the possible values for both size and type of pizza. Now we'll create an entity of type composite bag, which is a special type of entity that allows us to extract all the entities at the same time, define multiple prompts and error messages, specify out of order extraction, and much more. We'll add these two value lists as bag items. You can explore all the different options here, but for now, we'll only change the prompt. As a third bag item, we'll add a system entity of type time. Once the composite bag is defined, we'll add that entity to the intent. This is how we tell the model to look for those values when the user wants to order a pizza. We can test this again with the utterance tester. Now for the third part of this walkthrough, we'll design how the conversation flows. The entry point to designing a conversation is the main flow. The guiding principle is that events trigger flows. We have events for intents, unresolved intents, dialogue flow errors, and more. This allows us to create modular flows that are called for certain events. By default, we can see that the unresolved intent event is mapped to a flow with the same name. Let's start by creating a flow to manage the greeting intent dialogue. We'll give it a name and select the intent that maps to this flow. This means that the flow will be called whenever we have a greeting intent. This is the canvas where we can define the dialogue. We can add states by clicking on the default start state and selecting add state. We have a wide variety of component templates that helps us define each step in the dialogue. For the greeting intent, 
we'll use the send message template to define a message from the assistant to the user. On the right side, we have the properties for the send message state. Each state has its own set of properties. This one only requires an output message. Let's test this by clicking preview in the top right corner. After typing hi, the greeting intent event is triggered, which calls our newly created flow. We can see the assistant response, and on the right side of the canvas, we have the conversation path, which visually describes what just happened. Now let's create another dialog flow. This time for the order pizza intent. This intent has a composite bag entity with some bag items that need to be resolved. Again, we'll start by adding a new flow, giving it a name, and selecting the desired intent. We'll add a send message state to acknowledge the ordering of the pizza. These are the same steps as we did in the greeting flow. Then we can use the resolve composite bag template. As you can see, there are different properties here. We need to create a variable that points to the composite bag entity. We can do that straight from this screen, where we define the variable name and select the entity that is mapped to. Once we do that, immediately all the prompts from the entity are displayed here. We can end this dialog with an ending message. These are the main principles when designing dialog flows. You have a wide variety of templates that helps you in quickly create a flow. Now it's time to test everything. We'll pick up where we left off before and try to order a pizza now. After the acknowledgement message, the resolve composite bag starts, and all of this logic is handled in one single state. Again, the visual conversation canvas helps in following the dialog path. And in just a few minutes, we have an up and running dialog. We have many available tutorials that give more detailed information on how to create skills. Check out our documentation page.